Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is for Dream Physique. Thank you for stopping by for something which I think this is this is gonna be kind of interesting. This is kind of cool. This is something I haven't done in a while, and I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. But I know, I know, some of you guys are probably thinking like Igor, like what the hell? There's you. You're on the bench press. You're in the gym. You got your face in the corner as always. There's nothing new. What are you talking about? Is this clickbait? Cause I've got my I've got my finger ready. I'm gonna dislike the shit out of this. But don't worry, give me a minute, I will explain. Before that though, the first part of this video was going to be a workout commentary because I want to kind of touch upon this new thing that I am trying out recently and to be honest, something which kicked my ass and then later on in the video, I actually want to do a little bit of an you know, like a life update. I know, I know, surprising, right? My vlogs are like, welcome to 80% workout commentary. We're gonna draw 17 graphs, break out the Microsoft Excel, and then the, the last 10% is gonna be like, oh, by the way, Here's a life update. So if you wanna see that, you can skip to this timestamp, but in the meantime, let's jump into this workout because it was kinda of cool. So this, I think this video, I'm gonna call something, let's be honest, it's like, you know, 10, 10, maybe 15%, something a little clickbaity. It's gonna be like, this was hard, or this is harder than I anticipated, and there's actually two reasons for that, but number one is this bench workout, but the little bit of a twist is I decided to do paused bench press training. For those of you guys that don't know, paused bench press training is pretty much a standard flat barbell bench press, but when it's on your chest, you actually pause for like around one second or two, and essentially you allow the bar to pretty much completely stop all motion once, you know, whatsoever, and then you press it off your chest. This is actually the standard kind of bench press that you do in competitions. So like if you're doing powerlifting or in the Paralympics, they also have the bench press. There's no such thing as a competition for touch and go bench press, where you actually bring down the bar, touch your chest and bench it back up. It's, you know, full range of motion, but competitively speaking, that's not a thing. It just doesn't exist. And, you know, to make matters even worse, you know, especially those people who are like, you know, I don't even do touch and go. I bring the barbell down to 90 degrees and that's it. Because anything lower than that, you know, it's bad for your shoulders. It's it's bad for your chest. It's bad for you because you're a little bitch. You know, people who do that, like, you know, good luck, you know, go have fun. Guess what? That's not a bench press. That's like, that's like 70% of a bench press. It's not the same thing. I'm doing four sets of six reps, and I'm trying to get a solid one second pause on each rep. And this makes the exercise so much fucking harder, but to be honest guys, that is one thing that I love. Because when you have a hard exercise, when you have a hard workout, when you do something new that you are not used to, that is actually what stimulates you to put on additional strength, put on muscle mass. Uh, last month, I did 285 pounds on the bench press. And I was doing that for almost 10 sets of three. So I thought I would come in, you know, take away like 20 pounds because obviously on the pause, it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah, that was not the case. I decided, you know, I'm gonna work up to that slowly. I'm gonna start off with something like 235 and surprise, surprise, it was fucking hard. I mean, you guys are seeing right now, uh, the final few reps on, especially like sets three and four, it was so fucking challenging. My arms are shaking, the bar speed was so slow. There were times that I thought like, shit, I'm gonna need to call out for someone to come and bail me out and save my ass, that I decided not to actually increase the weight. I thought I was gonna, I thought I was gonna pyramid set up and I, I couldn't even do that. I pretty much stayed at the exact same weight throughout the entire workout. And I did complete the four sets of six, but damn. I mean, it is a bit humbling to start off out of weights and I thought that I'm gonna, you know, jump up 10 pounds from sets one to four and at the end I'm like, I, nope, nope, I can't, even, I can't do that. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna stay right here. That was a kick in the ass and that's why this workout was so much more difficult than I anticipated, than I predicted. I mean, a lot of people out there who kind of do like a, you've seen them before, they do the bench press and they kind of bounce it off their chest. There's nothing wrong with that. It's technically still a full range of motion, touch and go bench press. Look, it, it's, not, it's not cheating or anything, but it's like 5% kind of is. Because when you do that, especially at the bottom of your exercise, not at the top, the lockout with your triceps, that part's okay. You may be like benching, let's say like 300 pounds, for example, but when you're at the bottom, because you kind of bounce it off, it's almost like you're benching like 270. It's almost like that little, that little bouncing effect takes off like 20 or 30 pounds, which isn't a lot, it's still a respectable lift, but it's not quite the same thing now, is it? This is, this is really nerdy and I can't believe I'm bringing this up, but this is a good example to illustrate this. I forget what it's called, like Isaac Newton's like fundamental laws of forces or inertia, I forget the name, but one of them was like every action has an equal and opposite reaction. There was even this like stupid, but kind of funny meme of like Isaac Newton, like, leans on car and then car leans on Isaac Newton because essentially when you 
you know, when you apply a force on something, that object is actually going to have like a, a force back at you. I think it's called like normal force or something. So this is, this is kind of similar to that because you may be putting like a certain amount of force due to the actual weight of the gravity or whatnot of the bar, but in doing so, your body's almost going to have a little bit of an elastic effect and that's going to make the process a little bit easier. France, let's go! But when you don't have that, and also when the bar is at zero miles per hour, another, this, this, is, this is getting really nerdy, but I swear guys, this is the last one. It's kind of like, you know that, that law of inertia, like things or objects in motion tend to stay in motion? So when you're benching and the bar is in constant motion, it's, it's a little bit easier. But when the bar comes, stops completely, like it's stationary, zero miles per hour, you kind of rest for a second, rest, because you're about to fucking get crushed by 300 pounds of steel. Then from zero miles an hour, you have to accelerate the bar, that is so fucking hard. And that's why I literally had to drop 50 pounds from what I was doing, you know, a few weeks ago, just because of that minor form tweak. And that's one thing I want to do before I end off this workout commentary, because since I was like younger, I definitely, one thing which has improved dramatically, in my opinion, it's almost a form of like exercise maturity. When I was younger, I remember the first time I ever bench pressed two plates, uh, 225 pounds, which looks really cool when you're like 19 or 18 in the gym and you do it for the first time. I told myself like, all right, that's it from now on. That's all I'm benching. I'm gonna come in the gym the next day, do three or four singles of 225 and head home. 220 pounds and lower, never again. You know why? Because it doesn't look cool. I, I, I don't know why I thought that. I, I guess I have to impress the guys in the gym, my friends, or that one kind of hot girl 30 meters away at the other side of the gym who probably doesn't even know who I am or give a shit, but still, she might walk by when she does. Mm, yeah, two plates, no big deal. I think the best thing you can do is when you train, train as if you're the last person on earth. Train as if there's nobody watching, no camera, nobody in the gym, no none of your friends, no fucking girls watching you, nothing, right? Train as if you were in, you know, like in Dragon Ball Z, the hyperbolic time chamber, like this imaginary dimension where there's no space or time. If you train there, you will truly train for 100% what is best for your body. If it's a lower weight or a more difficult exercise, in this case, the pause bench press, you are 100% going to do what's best for your body, not best for anything else. No matter who you're trying to impress, no matter how it looks like, none of that fucking matters. And I think that is the fundamental best way to train. And the fact that I finally kind of like these last one or two years really been doing that, you know, there's people weaker than me, there's people stronger than me, that's great. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna do what's best for me based on what I know, my experience, the scientific research that I've done, pretty much just like what is best for me, nothing else, it doesn't fucking matter. You know, if you wanna try something new, definitely give this, uh, give this a shot, guys, because, you know, you can bench all day, but to actually lose that momentum, lose that bouncing effect, and try something new, a minor tweak on an old favorite exercise, and suddenly it's like it's your first time in the gym again. Suddenly it's like what you thought was so simple, it's like, 50% more difficult and it's a real kick in the ass. It's real humbling, but sometimes it's a kick in the ass that all of us need every now and then. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. I was about to vlog. I think she likes like the dead cat, yeah, the microphone thing that's on the camera. You know, I, I mentioned earlier why this video is gonna be called like the hardest thing I've ever done or something real like intense like that. Uh, the first reason, obviously, earlier in the video, the con, uh, the training commentary, was because I did pause bench press, which was challenging and it was hard, but that's actually like one of two, and to be honest, reason number two is probably a little bit bigger. I wanted to do kind of like an update as to what's been going on, and actually kind of explain why I haven't actually put up a video in like two weeks. Trust me, I fucking hate that, alright? Just to give you a little bit of an update as to what's, you know, what's actually been happening, so you guys know, I've mentioned in my previous couple of videos, that I'm launching a, a program, a course, on, uh, I was supposed to be, supposed to be being the keyword, October 22nd, the Skinny Fat Solution. Pretty much the first, the first actual physical product I've ever launched, although the book is actually just one part of it. It's gonna be a, gonna be a course, it's gonna be online, it's gonna be a book, there's gonna be a whole, there's, there's a lot of stuff, but I'll, get, I'll talk about that in a, in a future video. So this, it's, how do I put this? It's fucking hard. It's a lot more difficult than I anticipated. Actually, one of the reasons why I have to officially push the launch date back two weeks to November, uh, Monday, November 5th. I fucking hate doing that because in my head, it's almost a little bit of like admitting, I don't wanna say failure, but it's admitting that I, I took too much on my plate or I didn't manage my time wisely. Overall, it's just, it's not a failure, but it's, it's definitely not good. It's something that I don't like doing. I don't like personally admitting 
weakness or like uh, ineptitude or just you know doing something not the best especially when it comes to my business other parts of my life my fitness nutrition all that stuff is bad when it comes to my business it's like fucking no like you do it 10 out of 10 not even like 9.5 out of 10. so a lot of youtubers out there like uh, myself included, we would launch programs and when it's 100% digital, when it's like a PDF or like you kind of join a course or something that's 100% online, it, it makes things a lot, a lot simpler. The fact that it's physical, it like, this process is like 300% more complicated than it was in the past. And it's definitely something which is new uncharted territory for me. But honestly, like I could probably lecture about this for a long time. I actually thought, you know what? I want to give you guys a little bit. Like, I've always talked about how my favorite like thing to do on this channel, in addition to just like eat the chicken and bench the weights, you know, the standard kind of fitness stuff. I want my channel to be a little bit helpful in other things. And one of my mo favorite things, uh, especially when I was kind of growing up and watching YouTube was kind of like business and finance and kind of like help you in more ways than one. Let's be honest, bicep six pack, it's important, but actually having your shit together or for many of you, maybe the prospect, the idea of starting your own business kind of side thing, whether it be like a legit business or kind of just like a side hustle, something like that. Wait, much... excuse me, is that a parking ticket? I'm fighting it, by the way. <laughs> I had my, my ticket on there, they didn't see. Fuck this. If any of you guys are out there uh, thinking about starting a business or becoming like, kind of like an entrepreneur, doing your own kind of thing, again, big, small, whatever, a lot of people will ask me like, what, what's it like? The best way I can describe it is that you are a fireman. That's probably a metaphor for what it is. And by, what I mean by that is that you are going to be constantly putting out fires. Like, shit is gonna go wrong all the time. If you're trying to do something which is, I mean, I don't understand how somebody could start and develop a business like Amazon or something. It's it fucking, it's mind blowing to me. Or like Gymshark, like it's it's like, it's you, it's like time travel. It's just, it's ridiculous. Cause you know, my business, it's, you know, it's a, it's a small business. Um, I, I don't know what, like at what point you just go from medium to small. I don't know what that stuff, but I mean, it's just me and Jordan who was like a lifesaver for me if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for her, this would be even smaller. This would be like one tenth of what it is. I'm the best. But I don't understand how that shit's possible because you are constantly like, yeah, you're developing products and you're doing stuff in this marketing and all that. But in, you know, through it all, you are constantly putting out fires like this. I decided to actually organize and show you guys a list of all the shit that we have to, you know, that we had go wrong. And some of the stuff was minor. And some of the stuff was like, Jordan, I would be sitting down for six hours at a couch brainstorming like, okay, what do we do to put out this fire? Because if we don't, then we have to like pretty much completely rethink what we're doing. Not a little bit, not a modification. Like we just, we're fucking done. We need to go back to the drawing board. Like so much so that at one point we thought that even though we ordered the books, we spent like thousands of dollars. Again, I put that kind of like slightly clickbaity thumbnail a couple weeks ago, which was like the $30,000 risk. It became so bad that at one point I thought like, okay, well, I guess we can't sell the books. We're gonna make the course 100% digital. And like the $30,000 is just some cost. It was that bad. Luckily we did get over it, but that's, that's kind of one thing I want you guys to understand that you are constantly, this shit goes wrong, this shit goes wrong, this shit goes wrong. And, and I just want to illustrate that for you. So for example, th this is how it all starts. Uh, Wix, that is our original website kind of like developer. I, my website, the one that you guys will see when you, you know, you visit like virtuinphysique.com, that is just done through a kind of standard, like do it yourself at home website builder. Some people think like, oh, who would design your website? I'm like, Jordan did with our like little template builder, which costs us like, a hundred bucks like a year or something. It's nothing fancy. That was great, but the problem is it is not scalable. What I mean by that is that like as your business starts to grow, you go from doing 10 sales to like a hundred sales to a thousand sales. And you go from doing a thousand sales a year to a month to a, you know, a day, hopefully someday off in the future. But eventually I realized that Wix, it's just, it's not really that good. It's great if you're like a, you know, a small person who wants to have a blog. Once you get to a certain amount of traffic, it just, it completely broke down. So this is not an option. So we said, okay, cool. We're going to go find another website. We found something called ClickFunnels. This is a very popular website used by a lot of people that you guys may not even know about in the fitness industry. And this is just like, you guys ever seen one of those websites where it's just like a long scrolling website and it's pretty much just like introduce the product, give details, give details, give details, provide all this stuff. And then, you know, like the, at the very end, it's kind of like, okay, buy now. So we like that because it was a very good massive website builder. I mean, there are companies do that do millions of dollars in revenue every year that use ClickFunnels. So it was very good and it's very good for digital products. So we thought, fucking awesome. That's the one that we really relied on for like for weeks. I mean, Jordan pretty much made a fully functioning ClickFunnels website. I'm pretty sure she was like 70% done. She spent days on this. And then unfortunately we realized that the website's fine, but once you get to the checkout page for physical products, and again, we're half digital, half physical, it completely like broke down. There was, we pretty much even like 
tried to get some custom shit. We talked to their helpline. We did all this shit. We spent like days trying to figure this out. And at the end of it, they were pretty much like, oh yeah, we don't do that. You want to sell courses? You want to sell like PDFs? You want to sell online stuff? We got you covered. You want to do a combination of digital and physical, which is what I'm trying to do. Uh, yeah, we don't do that. So like people literally couldn't select shipping options. They couldn't do anything. So like if you actually want to sell anything, right? Even if it's free, even if you want to just have people put in their address, that was a significant problem. And something which made us like pretty much say like, all right, we tried that, we tried this, we're fucked. What do we do? One thing we even like try, uh, com temporarily considered was using Amazon because Amazon's the opposite. Amazon's awesome for physical. If you've ever bought a book, you've gotten it from Amazon. So we thought, you know, it's super, it, Amazon's also so trustworthy. Everybody uses Amazon. Problem is, Exact opposite. Great for physical, not for digital. So pretty much it's gonna have two options. It's gonna have one which is purely digital and one which is digital plus the physical books. A lot of people, myself included, like I, I'm kind of an old school guy, right? I like the idea of like there's an online course, but it's almost kind of like you get like a textbook or like a manual to follow along for the course. Also, this is something that you don't have to do at your PC. It's kind of like, you know, you're on the bus, you're on the subway, you're commuting to work, you can read through it, you can learn it, like an actual legit, you know, textbook from a university. So the problem is that because we're doing something which is not really that done, nobody in fitness from what I know kind of does it. They either do kind of something physical, like, all right, I'm gonna sell like t-shirts or some kind of merchandise, or I'm gonna sell digital, like coaching or, or PDF programs or something like that. So to actually do both at the same time and give people the option, that fucked everything up. Cause you can't do click funnels, you can't do Amazon, we're like, we're, like, we're going in circles here. So we finally resorted to WordPress, which for those of you guys that don't know, WordPress is like the main website building platform out there. Luckily, Jordan figured it out, which is amazing because I, I can maybe, I figured out Wix, I can maybe figure out ClickFunnels. This, I have no chance in hell. So the fact that she was able to do so, good job, babe. And uh, so this was great. But the problem is it's not a full solution because the website we had, it was a little bit more complicated because we eventually, like the final solution that we actually did come to after all these fires that we had to put out, each of these was like a three hour conversation that we had to have, sit down, brainstorm, try to come up with a solution. Does it work? No. Okay. Back to the drawing board. Finally, we figured out there is a solution, but it actually requires three separate websites. No, you didn't put Teachable on there. There's four, another website. Four websites. One to hold the website. One to actually facilitate the checking out option, which can actually do digital and physical. One to set up a quiz, which is going to be a little bit different uh, from the actual standard website. Either way, finally, that's it. After fucking like, what, 15 different websites, we came to a solution. That's not it. You forgot Teachable. I, so, okay. One, two, three. Teachable, which is actually what's going to store the online course. Again, that's the online course and this is the physical course. So that's the fourth website. So like, these are all the digital problems that we had. But finally, after two months of pulling our fucking hair out, and again, this all this stuff added to the reason we had to delay uh, the website launch, we finally came up with a solution, which is pretty much towards like 90% done. We're just putting some of the finishing touches on the actual website. And we're like, okay, we're done with the digital problems. And then the physical problems start happening. So one of them, which is we actually got the book. This is the, the only version that actually exists at the moment. And it's nice, it's good, we're happy with it, but I don't know if you actually can tell. I'm trying to see that? See right, that right there? Can you see it on camera? Yeah. That's the actual binding. It's not that good. We told them to give us like good binding and you know, like reasonably priced, reasonably good binding. And we got it and we realized like shit, that's not that good. So two weeks into production, I actually called up the company and I said, listen, uh, could we switch to a more advanced binding? And they said, yeah, so we, we did some changes around that. It actually set the production time a little bit back. It also cost a little bit more money. It's nothing crazy. We're talking like literally like 30, 40 cents per actual book per unit to actually produce, but it's gonna be a lot better binding. The last thing I want is to get a product which feels unprofessional because pages are falling out. You wanna be able to open this book up in a year and not have some of the pages fall out. I never wanna launch something which is like, mm, six out of 10, seven out of 10, good. No, if it's not fucking awesome, if it's not as good as a book that you'd see in like a legit store, what's in America, like Barnes and Noble or Chapters or Indigo or something, if it's not that good, I don't, I don't wanna go fucking anywhere near it. So that was a problem, but we fixed that. So mailers, uh, this one was also a little bit of a pain in the ass, pretty much like the actual envelope product that you have to, uh, you actually pack the books in. I ordered, uh, I ordered about 500 of these, uh, you know, I thought I was gonna, I, I told myself like, I'm, I'm gonna get 500, see how they are. If they're good, great, I'll order more in the future. But in the meantime, let's just get at this. I, let's get the minimum order. So we got these in, we spent like, you know, a reasonable amount of money, it's not the end of the world. And then we're like, okay, great. We have 500 mailers now and they're not that good. 
I got them. They're, they're not that bad. They're not going to fall apart or anything, but they just they don't look that nice. They feel unprofessional. The glue, the binding on the sides feels like, kind of rough. It feels like some crappy shit you get from like a $3 package you buy on eBay from China, not from what I want my overall product, my overall brand name to be. So we have to pretty much say like, all right, cool, that's nice. We've got like fucking five boxes of this stuff. It's, I got some stored over there. I got some stored in my car downstairs. I got some stored in my parents' house back home. It's crap, it's trash, we don't need it. So uh, we had to order additional ones from a slightly more expensive, more reputable company. They came in, those are awesome. So again, that was a slight pain in the ass because now we have 500 of these, of these things sitting around and I'm like, I, I don't know what to do with them. And then the final problem. This is the last fire and this is one actually probably bothers me the most because these ones are a pain in the ass, but we can fix them, right? This one pisses me off the most because I have no control over this. And if it's not my control, that's what truly annoys me because it's just, I'm at the mercy in this case of Canada Post. Like back in late September, um, Canada Post, which I right now, if I want to even have remotely decent, decent shipping rates, I need to use Canada Post. Uh, like the main Canadian government, like stand, it's kind of like what do they have in the States? Like USPS, United States Postal Service. They decided that they, they might go on strike. And I'm thinking like, <laughs> fantastic. Honestly, from the time I'm making this video right now, 17 hours ago, we are like, you know, it was supposed to be a week until launch date. And obviously I had to push it back to November 5th. I get, uh, I see an article and it's like as early as I believe like next Monday or something, they might start doing it. And I'm like, are you fucking, what? Like wh what, what the fuck? I don't know if this is shitty luck or if someone out there has like a little doll of me and they're doing like voodoo or something, but I'm like, what the fuck are the chances? They haven't gone on strike in years. And now literally like two weeks before the launch, that's when they decide to finally do it. So I'm literally sitting here on their Twitter. I'm like the only person who follows Canada Post at you know t Twitter or whatever. And I'm just refreshing trying to see what the actual status update is. We do have a contingency plan. It's just I don't want to fucking do that because if you go for something like uh, UPS or Pure Later or one of the other private uh, mailing companies, because of my business size, I'm not like Gymshark or like or Alpha Lead or something. So in their case, they can get deals with these companies. They can be like, listen, you give us a good rate, we're gonna we're gonna give you millions of dollars in business. I don't have that. If I came to them, I said like my numbers, um, they'd be like, we don't give a shit. We're literally talking a difference of like, the cheapest I was able to find for Canada Post would be like something around like 14, $15 Canadian uh, to ship to the States, which is around like 10 bucks American. I would probably even charge less than that, which means I'd probably take a few bucks hit on each on each uh, actual shipment, just because I don't feel like charging you guys, my viewers, my customers that much. So, but when it comes to like, these other companies like UPS, it's like, I can't, like, that's fucking nuts, right? I would either have to swallow so much of the cost that it eats away the profit, or I would have to pass those costs on to you guys. And again, I don't, I don't fucking want to do that. I don't want to be like, literally the cheapest option I found with UPS was like $24 or something. I'm like, 24 bucks, what the fuck? For, to ship something? So if they go on strike, I'm fucked. And if they don't, then hallelujah. So guys, I apologize. I fucking hate doing this. You know me. There's two things I hate. A, missing deadlines. And B, not uploading frequently. But because of these 17 different fires that we had to put out, unfortunately, both of these occurred. I hate it, but... <sighs> this is also not mentioning the six months we spent making that book. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is just actual, like, finally putting, like, the finishing touches. The actual book design and printing and... And all that shit took, we've been doing this since 2017. The original idea came for this in June of 2017. This is another thing which like I personally believe in. I never wanted to be the kind of person who like talks a big game, but then doesn't, doesn't support it with action at all. The kind of person who is like, you know who did this and I fucking hate this shit. When I was in college, I took uh, science uh, back in undergrad university. Um, there would be some kids and they'd be like, um, they'd be talking like, Oh, what kind of practice am I going to have when I'm, you know, when I'm a doctor or I'm a dentist? You're in pre-med. Pre-med is just a fancy, like, uh, uh, you know, up your ass, you know, like, mm, so fancy way of saying that I'm in general science. Pre-med is anything because you can get into medical school no matter what courses you take. So these kids are walking around like, mm, I'm taking first year. You can be taking bioengineering, fucking law, political science. Who gives a shit? So they're walking around like, mm, I'm in pre-med. You're nothing. You know, you're not a doctor. This is rude. You're, I know, but it's just, I'm sorry, this just pissed me off. And again, it's these, it's the, these young guys, and again, they're 19, so fuck it, whatever. But it's funny, like, don't, I was going to say, like, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. No, this is counting your chickens before they're created, like, eight years before that. 
So I would never want to be that kind of person. So when I came up with this idea back in like summer or fall of 2017, we kept this under wraps and I only recently announced it like a month or two ago. And at this point it was legit. The books were like, you know, sent off. The website was starting to be developed. Like Google already had the first physical print. This is after like months of work. So we already have something to show for it. Like this is happening. This is real. Cause I never want to be that kind of person who's like, I'm going to do all these amazing things. I see that sometimes people who talk a big game, they talk about all the stuff they're going to do, all the stuff that they're going to have. But then in terms of actually action to get there, it's like, what's that? What? They're just like, oh, you know, don't worry about it. That'll, that'll happen. That'll work out. And then in 50% of cases, it never does. And you're just kind of like, what? What? Because when you say that, people start to value your word, your promises, your brand. They start to value it less. And I fucking hate that shit. And that's why, that's why I'm only doing this video now, two weeks away from the... Uh, the official watch. Again, for all you guys out there who want to be entrepreneurs or whatever, sometimes I see, I thought this when I was younger, right? I thought like, mm, one day I want to own my own business, I'm going to make my own hours, I'm going to be my own boss. Like, I even heard that there's like this really popular book, uh, the motivational like entrepreneurial book, it's called like the four hour work week, how like, you know, you're supposed to be able to like uh, streamline your entire business to the point where like you only work four hours a week and it's just kind of self-sustaining. I'm like, that's great. That'll happen when you're like 10 years in, maybe. The first nine years is gonna be you grinding. And people who are like, mm, I wanna make my own hours. Yeah, you do. Your hours are gonna be like 16 hours a day. Don't get me wrong, guys, I fucking love it. I would rather work, you know, 16 hours a day, sleep like four hours here or there. I would rather do that with something that I truly love than work like, you know, standard eight hour job, eight hour shift doing something I don't give a shit about. Like, again, people say like, oh, you know, I love to be a, you know, a boss, you can make your own hours. Yeah, it's called eight in the morning until one in the morning. And then you, you know, you work out here or there, and uh, yeah, that's it. But uh, yeah, so if any of you guys out there wanna be, you know, you're young, a lot of my viewers are kinda like in their early 20s, you think I wanna start a business one day, I wanna do this kind of stuff. My answer is number one, fucking yes, do it, especially digital. We are in the best time in the history of the universe for mankind to start a business and do this kind of stuff. It used to be you want to start a business, good luck. You need like $50,000 in investment uh, fund from like, re you know, from bank loans or investors. And then you could start like a restaurant or like a club or I don't know, something like that. And there's like a, there's like an 80% chance you'll fail and you'll be completely broke and then you're screwed. Nowadays, you can start with absolutely nothing. I mean, you can make a YouTube channel for free using your smartphone camera, which again, you already have that, so there's no actual physical investment. Anybody could do anything. You want, I know people who literally, babe, didn't you tell me you know someone who stole stickers? There's literally a YouTube lady who sells stickers online. I think like, who the fuck would buy this? Apparently people do. She, she sells she a lot. She has like six employees. She, I have a sticker shop. Yeah, so like, I mean, there is a market out there for anything. I think it was like, can't remember, I think it was either Gary Vanierchik or, or Ty Lopez. I, some, I, know, I watched both their videos. Uh, I think they, they were talking about how like right now, like e-commerce, so like digital stores and social media, those two things, A, they're pretty much both free. You do those two things, your potential is unlimited and anybody can do this. You don't need a university degree course. You don't need anything. You need minimal startup funds. It's fucking awesome. So my advice to you is if you're thinking about this, even though this may seem stressful, God damn it, do it. Do it now. You know, do it. I don't care if you're in school. I don't care if you're 17. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you work three jobs on the side. If you've got time, even if you don't have time, fucking do it. It's awesome. All right, guys. So that's it. I apologize that this video went very long. I just want to kind of give you guys an insight into my video, into what's going on. You know me. I fucking hate not putting up a video. And I truly hate pushing back deadlines. But in this case, I would rather launch something which is like 10 out of 10, not 9 out of 10, not even 9.5, literally 10 out of 10. The thing that I'm most proud of, I'd rather launch that in two weeks as opposed to launching some kind of crap that you kind of put together with duct tape right now just to hit some arbitrary deadline. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, especially when it's these kind of just like random, you know, ranty videos where it's just me burning 800 calories. This is how I stay shredded, by the way. This is how I'm, yeah, this is, it's just, this is, this is my tie bow. But uh, yeah, either way, thanks so much for watching. Ascension episode six is out and I'll see you guys in the next video. I think the next one I'm gonna do a bit of an informational one. Probably like, I think I'm gonna film it tomorrow or the day after. So I gotta make up for lost time. Either way, see you guys in that next video. Hadouken!